Alex Peltzer talking about uh, NF Core, uh, community built bioinformatics pipelines. Um, so if there are some questions, you can just go to Slido and to BOSC 219 and get them lined up. Later on, slides are available online. You can actually access that already, so you don't have to take that much notes if you want to. Uh, if you wonder why um, I might have heard that on Monday already, yes, there's an entire season of NFCore talks coming up, basically. There's one, uh, episode one was on Monday on the BioInfo Core one, episode two is today, and there's another one uh, talk tomorrow at the ABC2 workshop as well in Basel. So if you're keen to see all of three of them, tomorrow is another one. They're all covering a bit of a different angle of the project itself. So as you might have uh, already experienced and saw your, on your own as a bioinformatician, data and computational biology, physics and chemistry is typically rather large. We have big petabyte scale data sometimes. We have very diverse data, which we see in bioinformatics core units as such. I'm working in one as, uh, in Tübingen. Um, it's typically very diverse data sequencing, sometimes proteomics, <laughs> metabolomics data, single cell, bulk RNA-seq data, for example, whole human genome, but also bacterial genomics, for example. And typically, these data sets are also very erroneous. We have typical mesh problems with sequencing instruments that are occurring quite often, especially if you have really big data sets. You actually see a lot of errors arising. And we need methods and uh, tools to analyze such data. As bioinformaticians, we are all aware of that. But I wanted to take that one minute to uh, motivate this properly. So uh, what people are typically coming up, as we all, all seen in the talk before already, uh, people are typically, typically building up workflows and pipelines then cons that consist of dozens uh, of different tools, dozens of individual methods that have been contributed by various people all around the globe in various different labs. And this typically results for complex or bigger projects in really complex dependency trees and configuration requirements. So if you have a look at uh, this is actually from uh, Steinbissett al paper, uh, Companion of Observe for Annotation Analysis of a Parasite Genome, which was published in NAR216. So this is the dependency graph of that analysis pipeline, basically. So this looks like a huge mess. It's complex, it's difficult to maintain, of course, and making this easier is actually one of the core, core things that bioinformaticians typically tend to work on. Also, another thing that came up in the last years, especially if you're really trying to build on top of bioinformatics software that has been built by other people, what you typically also experience is a problem in terms of installation of software, installation of software across multiple systems, cloud providers, making installation of software, bioinformatics tools easy to applicable to local clusters, HPC infrastructure, cloud providers, and a local workstation that your collaborator might have, for example, for some reason, and they want to do and run their own analysis. And there was a nice paper, actually, by somebody who took a bit of an effort to um, benchmark this a bit in terms of a meta bench benchmark, basically, just looking at software, whether they can be installed and easily installed on systems like this. And they found that about 51% about of the software they tried to install, which was kind of a more or less random selection of bioinformatics tools, were difficult to install, and 28% of them, the tools failed to be installed at all, So, which is kind of an alarming thing. It's not something completely new for somebody working in bioinformatics, I guess. Most people will kind of have a gut feeling about this, that this is reality, kind of. But still, it's, it's not something we should be too happy about, actually. This actually comes into play, especially if you have really large projects, which are nowadays much more common than they have been like 15 years ago. So if you look at big projects like 1000 Genomes Project, which is, which is kind of finished, but still somewhat ongoing, uh, we have bigger projects now, 100,000 Genomes Project in the UK, we have a EU uh, 1 million Genomes Project, kind of in a planning phase at the moment. So this is going to come in in the next years, and there are other countries also planning similar things to do. So that means you have to be able to actually reproduce what you did five years ago, because these projects are typically running for years and years, and you have to be sure that whatever you do with your bioinformatics software, you, with your bioinformatics tools, is kind of reproducible five years, 10 years from now on in a good way. So. To sum this up, many paper results are really hard to reproduce, and that's actually kind of not just my experience, but that's probably what a lot of people are actually experiencing in their everyday bioinformatics work. 
So this is what you typically would see. I found this on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, which is, I think, summarizing pretty much what I talked about in the last two minutes. Um, so people typically find a nice method. They want to try that. They want to try a pipeline or some fancy new method they have found somewhere on their specific set of data they generated in their lab, want to integrate that with something else published, and that's what you end up. You have this huge mess of soft tail yeah, that doesn't work as expected, for example, for some weird reason that you just experience. So some, some would sum this up to be a requirement for fair data, fair data uh, sharing, and also fair data analysis. So if you can't make sure that your methods are reproducible, if you can't make sure that your methods are also interoperable between systems, for example, then you can't really approach this fair challenge. So with that in mind, I want to give another two minutes to introduce Nextflow. So some of you might already have heard about Nextflow. Nextflow started as a domain-specific language, which is kind of a Java Groovy-based uh, domain-specific language, which allows for fast prototyping of pipelines. You can, in a, you can basically compose individual tasks and processes quite easily with it. It can also be used to parallelize certain tasks uh, across clusters, for example, across cloud infrastructure if you want to. It's quite nice that you can also self-contain individual tasks, so you can have a Docker container, for example, bundling software dependencies that you have for specific tasks or for the entire pipeline itself. And the isolation of such dependencies is relatively easy compared to what we've been doing before we actually came up with uh, using Xflow. And you can keep these containers, of course. That's the easy part about it. So it's completely automated. You can automate the entire pipeline structure that you want to have. You can parallelize everything. It's quite reliable, to be honest. So we've been using it in the core unit now for quite a while. A lot of others are also doing the same. And they're, the reports are, in general, very, very good. So it's very reliable, even if really large um, large workflows and large data sets, sample sizes. So we had, been, had people that were running NF core pipelines, RNA seq pipelines on tens of thousands of samples simultaneously on large cluster or cloud instances, and that worked almost perfectly. It's very easy for others to learn and to run. So if you, even if you're not an experienced developer, it's really easy to learn how to run an Xflow pipeline. We have a lot of project managers who are not actually working on developing these pipelines, but are actively using the ones that have been developed by people that are actively contributing to NF core pipelines. And the results are 100% reproducible if you follow some certain kind of best practice, yes. So it's very nice that you can also ex uh, abstract the way uh, infrastructure in a very nice way. So Nextflow calls this an executor, basically. So what you can basically do, you develop your Nextflow script, and you have multiple execution levels that you can access there in an executor scope. So you basically can specify, okay, I want to use a local executor. This will execute your job on your local machine. You can uh, specify PBS. This will submit it to a pre-configured PBS scheduler, for example, on a cluster. You can do the same with a Kubernetes cluster or, for example, with AWS Batch or Google Pipelines. This works without modifying the actual workflow script, which is really nice because that scales really well if you have multiple people contributing to something like that. So this is a typical Nextflow mini script, which I'm not going to go into detail here. If you're interested, you can have a look at the slides online as well. So with that in mind, while we figured out, okay, this is really nice to port code across institutions, it would be really nice if you just share efforts here. So that was basically the hour of birth of an NF core, which is a community of people building pipelines using Nextflow, building standards and best practices in a joint effort to make a, a set of pipelines available that can be used for, for bioinformaticians working in core units, but also for other people in the public in a completely open sense open source uh, point of view and to save the time in development for people. So there we had a couple of cases where this already came into place. So we had a couple of people who were actually building, there's a new ancient DNA fa facility building up in Stockholm. People were actually looking for pipelines there. I myself did my PhD in ancient DNA, ported my old pipeline to NF Core. They saw that pipeline, just took it from there, took it from the NF Core and saved a lot of time and effort to actually build their own now. Same with some RNA-seq spe specific pipelines. We saved a lot of time and effort to build our own. We could just build on others' work and improve, contribute actively to that. 
So that basically is the entire thing behind NFCore. So what we want to do is invest much more time in testing and frequent updates, updating best practices instead of building our own thing and resisting on our own bioinformatics silo so far. So these are just the, the people who contributed the most so far, but there's a whole bunch of more people, of course, involved, heavily active, and it, probably I'm dropping that soonish because it's actually not, not really a big picture of the entire community. So we are now about 20 institutions, others joining still, um, spread quite uh, widely, while we still have a quite Europe-centric view here, but I think there's a couple of people from the US catching up, some people from Canada now are interested to join. South America, there were some people contacting us and also asking for access. Well, it's open source, so we said, yeah, go ahead, it's open, you can do whatever you want. And there is even more, which is a new uh, page that we have on our main web page. So there's actually a lot more people now actually active on the Slack channel that we built a Slack community. So it's completely open. Everybody can join whenever they want, basically. We are actually enforcing, not enforcing, but kind of pushing people to also contribute to other upstream projects. So we are actively pushing people to contribute to Conda Forge and Bioconda because we are relying on packages, software dependencies to be built and maintained on Bioconda because it makes our life easier and also contributes to the wider communities that are involved in building these kind of packages because we don't want to sit in our own silo building NF Core stuff, but also want to contribute in a wider sense to the community. We also have other people in the Nextflow community which, with whom we have a very close bond, uh, also people in the Docstore community. There's various communities which, with whom we are actually actively collaborating and there might be more opportunities there. So if there's somebody having an, a, a cool idea or something like that, then just approach us. We're very open to actually make that happen if this is possible. So if you use various channels for communication, we have Twitter, we have Google Groups, we have a very active Slack channel. We have a GitHub organization with open issue trackers, wiki, open um, uh, a code of contact, conduct actually as well uh, since a couple of months. And we actually, actually in encourage everybody to just join and try out pipelines, contribute whatever they can basically. All the pipelines that we have are actually following uh, certain requirements. So we enforce Nextflow to be used, of course. We uh, require them to be MIT licensed so that people can reuse, re reuse them easily. We also require that software should be bundled in Docker slash singularity. We actually enforce Docker and pull from Docker Hub generating singularity images. We uh, require continuous integration testing using Travis, so all pipelines have to be automatically tested using a test data repository that we have. We also require stable release tags so that people can actually come back and say, I want to run version 1.0.0 of that specific pipeline in two years from now on. And we want to have some kind of a common pipeline usage and structure. Software should also be bundled in Bioconda so that people can actually use Conda to install everything. So this is how we test pipeline code in general. So all of the pipelines are actually tested on Travis. What we also typically test is the documentation coming with the pipeline. So this is automatically testing using Markdown Lint to test whether it's a proper Markdown document. And the next four pipelines is, are tested using a so-called test profile with Docker and specific parameters for a specific set of pipelines. So this is an rna seq pipeline that is tested here, but other pipelines have the same thing basically. Um, yeah, basically that is something that I already explained. So that's the general infrastructure that we're building. We have code management happening on GitHub, building and testing on Travis CI, software dependencies via Bioconda and Docker Hub. And that goes all into NF Core, and then we basically are able to run our workflows on HPC systems or cloud infrastructure if you want to. I have two small kind of demos, so we are not kind of just enforcing people to follow these requirements. We also have a templating engine. So if you're intending to bring your own pipeline to, buy, uh, to NF Core, you can rely on NF Core uh, tools. NF Core tools is a set of Python tools that can be used to create a skeleton code of your pipeline, which follows current best practices. So if you click on that, if you download the tool using pip or conda, and you install that you can just get a skeleton code for your pipeline which already follows the best practices with a lot of hints and documentation additions so that you can actually build your own pipeline from zero to 100 in a couple of minutes hopefully. 
already following all of these best practices. Nice effect of this is this follows already best practices, uh, guidelines, and structure. So you can actually also benefit from some of the more fancier synchronization that we allow between pipelines. So we synchronize best practices across pipelines using GitHub and uh, Git apps, actually. And of course, lint checks for pipeline conformity. So we have currently 15 stable pipelines uh, available for various types of applications, 18 more in development, lots of people working on this. So we're in total about 60 people now working actively on various types of analysis pipelines. And it's getting more and more, various types. So we have proteomics people, we have people from genomics mostly, but that's it. More people encouraged to join in. This is, for example, a config profile, another thing that I wanted to give a quick highlight. So if people are interested to use a pipeline, they can simply submit such a config profile for their own infrastructure to NFCore Configs, which is a special repository that we have. The only thing you have to do, you have to provide a description of your configuration profile there. You have to specify whether you want to use Singularity or Docker or something like that. You have to define how you actually submit jobs using your cluster scheduler and what your cluster nodes have in terms of computational power, and that's all about it. And then you can submit this to NFCore Configs and run any NFCore uh, pipeline on your cluster automatically. That's is, that is something we are kind of proud of. All NFCore pipelines come with interactive reports. We enforce that actually. All of them have multi-QC reports with additional information on it. Proper documentation is also something we enforce for all pipelines. And actually, there's a lot more which I don't have the time to talk about in these 20 minutes. But if you want to, you can actually check this out on the homepage, which is actively, um, hopefully, providing all of this information if you're interested in having a more detailed look there. We have some upcoming plans for, and of course, some people were actually asking for us to integrate bio containers more efficiently, which we're in contact with the team behind that. We also wanted to do automated cloud tests, price estimates full-size data testing because the current tests that we are running are smallish data sets because of the limitations that we have with Travis CI, but we're planning to do full-size testing. We actually do that for some of the pipelines, and we want to work on NFCore modules because NextFlow is going to be modularized very soon, so you can actually import certain predefined library style of modules in NextFlow code, which we want to actually provide a community resource for as well. So. This is a very open project. We are looking for people to contribute. So if you're keen to actually contribute something, we're happy to have you. Um, just join over the Slack channel, Twitter, whatever you contact, if you prefer, and come in and work with us. Thank you.